This session has been organized under the aegis of Agro and Food Processing Expert Committee of BCIC. We would like to specially thank Mr. Ankur Bomik, Chairman of the Agro and Food Processing Expert Committee of BCIC and Chief Operating Officer MTR Foods. And also Mr. Narsima Nakshatri, Co-Chair of the Agro and Food Processing Expert Committee BCIC and Consultant Nakshatri Associates. And also we'd like to thank Mr. Jagdish Sungat, Special Invitee to the Agro and Food Processing Expert Committee of BCIC and Director of Kanagadara Agriculture Innovation and Dr. Sanjay Divedi, Member of the Agro and Food Processing Committee of BCIC and Director at ORBI Seeds International for curating this session for the benefit of our members. The speaker for today's sessions are Mr. Jagdish Sunkar, Director, Kanagadara Agriculture Innovation, and Mr. Pratik Tiwari, Founder and CEO, The Living Greens. They will be speaking to us on soilless cultivation, aeroponics, prospects, and the features in Karnataka, and also converting the rooftops into organic farm for self-use and commercial farming. The session will be moderated by Dr. Sanjay Divedi, member of the Agro and Food Processing Expert Committee of BCIC. On behalf of the Chamber and the Office Bearers of BCIC, we express our sincere thanks to Mr. Jagdish Sunkat and Pratik Tiwari for accepting our invitation to address on this important subject. We would also like to thank all the participants for joining in today's session. We request all the participants to kindly mute your mic and webcam option. This is to enhance and keep the bandwidth strong as well as avoid any disturbance in the background. Please post your questions in the chat box only. The speakers will respond the questions during the session or in the Q&A session. And also, if required, you could raise your hand so that our uh, speakers will be able to take up your question. May I now invite uh, our president, Mr. K.R. Shaker, to kindly address the members to take forward the session. Over to you, President Sir. Thank you, Prithvi. And uh, good evening uh, to all my friends there. Uh, first, I should thank Mr. Nasima Nakshatri and Ankur Baumik for uh, organizing this uh, wonderful event. Uh, the event itself, the title of the event itself is great. Soilless Agriculture and then what is called the Terrace Garden. Uh, Mr. Nakshatri, I'm not an agricultural expert, so pardon me for my ignorance on certain aspects of an agricultural expert. I am except for the fact that I'm a user of the end product that is coming out of an agriculture. That's all I would say that my nexus to the agriculture. Sorry for apologies for me being ignorant, but let me try to learn a few things in the days to come. And when Mr. Narsima Nakshatri told me about the topic, a few years back, if it suggested the topic of terrace gardening and soilless cultivation, people would have hit us with a pelted stone. Boss, what are you guys talking about? Terrace gardening and soilless cultivation. What are you guys talking about it? But today in agriculture, this is becoming a reality. Uh, there's, a, there's a very good statistic that is coming out of the Planning Commission, which is a very important area document. Uh, of course, fortunately, this document got vindicated by the our economic survey two years back. The cultivable land that is coming up for cultivation is slowly declining. What was a cultivable land was almost 50 to 40 to 50 percent of the total land was a cultivable land. Today is almost coming to 20, 30, 30 percentage. And number two, the challenges in the water and the challenges in the availability of water has also created more challenges from the agricultural perspective. India did try through a drip irrigation system, but unfortunately, we were not successful in the drip irrigation system for multiple reasons. But one of the reasons is that the land holding in India is different compared to other Western countries for the purpose of using the drip irrigation system. So every company and every uh, uh, inventions on agriculture was trying towards a modernization and see how best we can reap the benefits of technology and modernization in agriculture. And that is what the efforts of the government has been made. And basis that the Prime Minister made an announcement two years back that by 2024, he would guarantee a certain amount of per income to the farmers. But people are all not uh, confident or optimistic about that. But the government is very optimistic because the government said the way the cultivation has to happen, the way agricultural research has to happen, all those things will undergo a change. But nevertheless, there is always a continuous focus on agriculture, on the modernization, 
what I would call uh, a revolutionizing the agriculture in a different form. The second important aspect that takes us to this is the non-availability of cultivable lands in the vicinity of the city. You, can, you have got a cultivable lands in the outskirts, not in the city with the result. Uh, there's a continuous increase in the logistics cost and the transportation cost of the vegetables and the fruits. People who have traveled in the Maharashtra, in the interior parts of Karnataka in the morning would see a lot of vegetables and the fruits drying on the roads of the uh, highways because nobody is there to take care of the vegetables and the fruits after 9 o'clock. It gets dried up and it gets thrown out. You have a huge wastage in the agriculture, particularly in the end products when it gets transported. And again, the government was focusing on more on a warehousing and agricultural warehouses and what do we call the logistics and other areas the government is planning to support. But beating all these things, thanks to my good friends, Mr. Rankur and Narsima, we are having a great webinar today on terrace gardening and what is called the soilless cultivation or aerophonics. Uh, terrace gardening, I, 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 I'm a little bit aware of the terrace gardening, not because of feeling thanks to my wife. In my balcony, there's a huge garden is there where I will say capsicum, lemon, coriander leaves, uh, curry leaves, brinjal, all of those things are growing in my group garden with amount of flowers, bearing fruits, all flowers and vegetables are there in my roof garden. Uh, so terrace gardening is something, a concept which has been very well accepted nowadays. And in fact, uh, not a, I'm not talking joking, but in Tamil, there's a movie got released a few years back. Uh, in fact, yesterday I was joking, telling Narsimhana Chetri about this. Uh, a movie got released where a heroine was in a mid-age, wanted to, she was more interested in agriculture and the cultivation. She started using the terrace gardening and due to the terrace gardening, her vegetables became more popular than normal vegetables and she was in a higher demand. And there was a movie got released and thanks to that movie, I could see in Tamil Nadu, a lot of ladies started doing the terrace gardening because in, in India, unfortunately, if you need to do anything, if it comes through your chamber or if it comes through an expert, it doesn't hit the masses. But when it comes through a movie or a movie star, it hits the masses. And terrace gardening hit the masses through that movie in Tamil Nadu. I, 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 today, if you go to any, any parts of Chennai or any parts of Tamil Nadu, the terrace gardening is more popular there. So, and, and terrace gardening is also becoming a more important area for the purpose of Hobbing perspective also, more from the is coming hobbing perspective also. The second aspect of the soil is cultivation. It's something I understand it is coming to the air moisture and stuff like that. But suffice to say that there's one more trend in the agriculture which is coming up. And I'm happy that under the dynamic leadership of Mr. Rangpur Bomik and Narsimha Nakshatri, Bangalore Chamber of Industry and Commerce taking a lead on this particular program. And we have got an excellent speakers uh, Dr. Sanjay Divedi, uh, sorry, <coughs> Dr. Sanjay Divedi, Mr. Jagadish Sunkar, and Mr. Pratik Tiwari for the excellent speakers who are going to speak on that. I understand Mr. Pratik Tiwari is taking the call from Jaipur and Jagadish Sunkar is taking the call from Delhi. Thank you so much, sir, for accepting the BCS invite and taking the call from the faraway places. And once again, thanks to Dr. Sanjay Divedi, who is happy to articulate and happy to give his perspective on this very good topic which will be relevant for all the members once again thank you so much for being here and thanks for all the uh, support dr uh, mr ankur bomik and narsimana chitri for doing it and you've got a person as a president who is only user of the agricultural product but may not be an agricultural expert but thanks to you i am also learning few tips on the agriculture which may be relevant as a past time post my retirement that's all i would say Thank you so much for being here and thanks a lot. Have a great show. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, President, sir, for this wonderful address uh, to the members. Though you are not aware on the soilless cultivation, but still you shared uh, good thoughts, uh, which was really a good eye-opener for us all. Uh, may I now request uh, Mr. Ankur Bomek uh, to set the theme for the, the today's session and uh, take forward, sir. So over to you, Ankur Bomek, sir. So thank you, Prithvi, and uh, thank you, President, for uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, so kind words. And yes, I would say that you have done most of my job because already uh, the, uh, the contest has been set and, uh, and it has been done so nicely. And like you, I'm also not agricultural expert. 
and when we have distinguished uh, speakers like uh, Mr. Jagdish Sunkar and uh, uh, Mr. Pradik Tiwari, and which is moderated by Ms., uh, Dr. Sanjay Divedi, uh, I would rather uh, spend more time in listening and understanding and knowing and have a good learning session from all of, it, all of you. And like most of you, uh, I would also like to uh, like to listen rather than to talk about uh, more on aeroponics and uh, uh, terrace uh, gardening. Uh, I when I really talk about this aeroponics and uh, terrace gardening, one thing comes to my mind and uh, which president already touched upon that cultivable land. And we are saying that the world today are facing the greatest challenge. The challenge is about sustainability, challenges about climate, challenges about uh, and uh, when we talk about agriculture and with increasing population and also uh, when the poverty is getting elevated and, and food consumption is going up, we need more land. And to have more land, we always talked about we need more water, we need more land and we need more fertilizer, more pesticide, because if we have more pesticides, more production would happen. But somehow we really need to look at whether this is sustainable or not. Uh, somehow we need to really look at that resource uh, on the planet is finite. And uh, when sustainability was a buzzword a decade ago, and believe me that if we had talked about sustainability, they was, they, people would say it is a job of a consultant. But today, with, uh, it has become a kind of an imperative for all of us to be responsible and to be innovative. I think innovation is the most important thing uh, to really see that how can we find a ways to have cultivation which requires less water, less no land, no pesticide, less uh, fertilizer. And yes, one is most important thing that when we really would like to do that, uh, one thing we always need to look at a cost of production, a reduced cost of production. And I'm not an expert and I really do not know how much is going to cost uh, aeroponics and uh, uh, terrace gardening today compared to the normal uh, cost of production. But yes, if, if even if it is high, I always believe it's a continuous process and therefore I said it's an innovation. It could be lower, it could be higher, but it has certain benefits. Uh, it has certain benefits about quality. It has certain benefits about uh, consistency where somebody can really look at the pH level, somebody can mod uh, look at the control of climate. So certain values that would bring and uh, uh, in 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 uh, aeroponics and for terrace gardening, yes, everyone in the balcony today would start doing that. It has a uh, lot of people that started doing it, but we it is we are all a beginner at this point of time. Uh, we have just begun the whole thing and the whole. It, to me, the seroponics and uh, terrace uh, gardening is more of futuristic. Uh, this is something is only going to grow. The noise had just started. And that, this is more of the sunrise, uh, you know, subsector of agriculture and which is only going to grow. And and uh, without uh, spending much time, uh, you know, because we all are going to hear from our distinguished uh, speakers and moderator who are uh, real entrepreneurs, scientists, achievers in the field, uh, having rich experience in soil breeding, uh, 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 sorry, seed breeding, soilless cultivation, and terrace gardening by using solar. So basically, what we really look at three S, seed, soilless, and solar. So what I'll do, I will not uh, 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 spend much time uh, on this. I'm eagerly waiting uh, uh, and looking forward to this session. And I'm also looking at it as a learning session and uh, and hand over to uh, Prithvi. Thank you so much. And uh, before I end, I really thank uh, all the speakers. I really thank uh, 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 the moderator uh, uh, to accept and uh, to uh, to share the knowledge uh, with all of us, which is going to be immensely beneficial. I thank President for taking out time uh, uh, and to be part of this uh, 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 this uh, training session. I sincerely thank. I thank uh, uh, Chamber for organizing this, and I also thank uh, our co-chair, uh, Mr. Narsimha Nakshatri, who actually taken initiative uh, to connect with all of you. And, and see that uh, we have this session where a lot of us would, would immensely benefit out of it. So thank you so much. And over to please. Oh, thank you, Ankurji, uh, for this uh, wonderful uh, setting the theme. Uh, without much wasting of time, I hand it over to Mr. Narsimha Nakshatri, 
who will be introducing the today's speaker and uh, taking it forward. Uh, over to you, Narsimha sir. Thank you, uh, President uh, Shekhar sir. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Baumik, uh, Chairman uh, Com Agro Committee, Agro and Food Person Committee. And uh, this, uh, our uh, webinar is telecasted uh, by the BCIC directly. And also it is being telecasted uh, at the Tirupati Venkatesha University and also at the, at the Malaysia and Singapore. Thank you very much uh, for all those, uh, the presentations and the live uh, telecast. So I would like to, first I would like to introduce uh, the Sanjay Divedi, who is a PhD in science and technology, who is our moderator. Sanjay has been working as the managing director of RB International Seeds Bangalore. He was a CEO for the United Genetics India Limited for six years. He has a special interest in breeding programs of tomatoes, peppers, brinjals, cucumbers, melons, and watermelons, and other vegetables, which has led to the release of several commercially successfully vegetable hybrids. So far, he has spent 25 years in the seed industry. RB International Limited is an in Indian seed company with a vision to grow into global seed player. The corporate offices in Bangalore and registrations are in inner and Bangalore. RB Seeds has trials centers in USA, Thailand, Malaysia, and various surgical vegetable crops under the leadership of Dr. Remo, who is well-known figure, chairman of RB Seeds International, former chairman of United Genetics USA, and it's going to develop high yielding disease resistance hybrids in vegetables, fruit and flower step crops to cater to the needs of Indian international farmers. Now, Dr. Sanjay Devedi is also a well-known figure in the processing tomato segment. He has released varieties suitable for this segment and successfully implemented comprehensive contract cultivation models in Maharashtra and Karnataka. He has been associated with the tomato companies like Heinz, Morningstar, Kagome, and Unilever for processing tomatoes. Interestingly, he has ventured into agri-tech space as well by co-founding Tene Agricultural Solutions Private Limited. The company has world-class products in crop health management. Both Agriculture and Horticulture Department of Government of Karnataka is using this product. They are also digitally empowering rural youth in this to provide crop health services to the farmers. This is about the brief introduction of Dr. Sanjay Divedi. And I would like to introduce uh, our friend, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Jagdish Sunkat. He is a director of uh, Kankadara Agri Solutions. He is in the field of uh, agriculture for the last 25 years with the agri business field. Uh, accomplishing innovating innovation management, contract farming, technology transfer, research and training, arranging joint ventures and collaborations. And he is a uh, Bachelor of Science in Electronics. And also he has done his management program in Comel in India, Agribusiness Management. He has done his uh, uh, Agri and Food Business Management program in Comel University in New York, USA. He has also done the MBA program in IM Bangalore management program for entrepreneurs and family business. He is in a notable work he has done in the public domain. One is aerophonics, soilless cultivation technology for seed potato and mini tuber production. He has also done a lot of work on super absorbent polymers, polymers, smart material that work as soil conditions, conditioners for creating a slow release mechanism for water nutrients. He has also done a lot of work on value chain initiatives, innovative interventions for building market linkages. Jagdish Sunkadi also works with a world wonderful startup companies by the name Centron Labs Private Limited, founded by passionate patriots of IIT and IAM who are using artificial intelligence to make complex machines that help grade fruits and vegetables. These machines help farmers and consumers. At high speed, 50 fruits per second, they are, 50 fruits, they are computed to determine the size, color, weight and defects and sweetness of the fruits. This is a small background of Jagdish Sunkat. Now, let me introduce my friend, Mr. Pratik Tiwari. He is a CEO and founder of the 
uh, organization called the Living Greens. He is an uh, agricultural engineer, MBA from Indian Institute of Modern Foreign Trade. He has worked in Mahindra and Mahindra, Reliance Fresh, ITC, and Walmart. He is working with a mission to cover the rooftops of all cities under a green cover of rooftop organic farms. This would not only make fresh organic vegetables from your own rooftop, but also significantly reduce the power consumption caused by the roofs being exposed to direct sun. So he is well known figure in this roof, rooftop gardening. Even the Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji also he has visited uh, several of his uh, the farms and uh, the exhibitions. I now I hand it over uh, to to Dr. Sanjay Devi to take up the the presentation. Please, thank you. Thank thank you so much, sir. And um, as as the topic says today, the aim aim of this total session is on sustainability. See, sustainability, the word was used more like a fancy word because we have worked worked in the industry for 25 years. People were telling sustainability, sustainability, but we never it never got into the business. So I think now the sustainability with these two topics they are really going to focus on sustainability and uh, as you know both of them they are a very well known people in the industry so i think let me invite uh, mr jagdish ji to start the program thank you sir thank you dr sanjay dr shikho dr sankur bomek and dr akshay sir you people have been guiding many youngsters and Thank you really for this opportunity where I can share some of the fragments I have pursued. Uh, I just request the presentation to be loaded, please. I have, as usual, technology when you're out stations, sometimes gives you a problem. Uh, while the presentation is being loaded, just as a brief background, you know, I came across this technology called aeroponics in 2004, and I began as a non-believer. I really walked out, I laughed at it, and I disbelieved it. And today, I'm practicing it. So that's my journey. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Can we run the video? It gives you an idea of the project. It's a short video that I'll set the background. If you click on that, yeah. Writing's not that easy, but Grammarly can help. This then is grammatic correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. The seeing is believing. The more you see it, the better feel you get for it. So this is a project that's uh, located a little few kilometers away from Dawangere. The two polyhouses, this is the plants. You can see the shoot. You can see the uh, there's no soil there. You can see the roots suspended in air. The two pipes you saw below there are carrying the nutrients. And we have advanced cooling systems which cool the whole polyhouse. We pump uh, clean and cold air to the crop so that we get the right climate. And we're able to grow potato throughout the year. Normally, potato is grown once in a year. And because of the kind of facilities we have created, we can grow it three times a year or even four times yeah. you can see that it's a commercial project many years ago it was just it was a small bench top model that i was experimenting with obviously because it's not a natural cultivation. We have to maintain a whole lot of uh, phytosanitary conditions there. Because you don't have soil, you need to mechanically otherwise hold the plants. These are our staff harvesting the tubers. I think that's given a general idea. We can pause the video 
and go back to slides, please. We do have a state of art tissue culture lab uh, and the whole uh, works. Next slide, please. So, uh, yeah, some other uh, visuals for you to get an idea of soilless cultivation. Let's quickly go through the photographs, please. Next slide, next slide. You can keep uh, two or three seconds on each slide. Yeah. So, yeah, these are various experiments being done by people. Next. Next. Yeah. Such is a technology where we are talking about vertical farming. We'll discuss it a little later. Next slide. Next slide. आलू की खेती में लगा जरूरत के अनुसार उत्पादन के लिए एवं रोग रहित बीज की आवश्यकता संस्थान द्वारा विकसित पारंपरिक विधि जैसे सीड प्लांट तकनीकी से और so this was a facility we had created at chikbalapur so after our initial lab experiments we went to chikbalapur now we are at davangere and we have been expanding next slide please next slide this is before the tuberization and you can see after tuberization see, normally if i grow a potato outside i would get say 6 to 8 to 10 tubers per plant here we take anywhere from 30 to 50 to 80 tubers per plant next slide please Slide. Yeah. So, uh, once again. so why do we need uh, aerophonics? You know, literally when we began this, I had asked myself, Jagdish, do you want to play God here? Nature works beautifully. Why are you meddling? Are you adding to the thing? Okay. Um, the only answer that came up to me is this. If I have practiced this experimentation, I shall be closer to nature. I'll understand how nature uses water and nutrients. And it has been a very uh, shocking experience for me. My respect for soil has gone up significantly because we worked on soil less cultivation. Like when a fish is removed out of water, it realizes the value of water. When I have taken out soil, I learned great secrets of the soil. Okay. Now, how is the next slide, please? Yeah, we can go through the points, just click them. Yeah. So, in aerophonics, first part, because these words are being used interchangeably, and today there's a lot of buzz. We have in Bangalore not less than 50 people who are experimenting with uh, various forms of soilless cultivation, hydrophonics, and aquaponics. Okay. Essentially, there is no medium for the roots to grow in. Okay, the plant is held by a collar, and the roots need to be in a chamber. Next, please. Yeah. So we have a misting mechanism which uh, will blow a mist of nutrients to the root system. That's very important. And invariably, aeroponics is not to be done on rooftop or anywhere. We have total climate control. So it's a controlled environment agriculture or CEAVC. Very important to understand this term and to work with it. Yeah. So what is unique about it? Next slide. Yeah. So the two unique features about aeroponics or any other form of cultivation really is roots breathe and hence the dissolved oxygen in water causes that high yield and high performance in traditional agriculture in most other agriculture roots experience stress because they can't breathe and hence energy has to be sent by the, to the phloem and the xylem to the roots uh, phloem to the root system in this case it's not required that is the extra energy available two in most media we have an issue where the nutrients bind and block, get blocked or locked here, there is no nutrition blocking. All of it is used by the plant or returned back for recently. Next slide, please. This is a little animation. So you have a chamber, you have a misting system, you have a growth going on top of that. Today, many people grow many crops. Unfortunately, if you really dig on the net, you'll find people growing uh, cannabis. Okay, That's the reason you don't find a lot of literature. Next slide, please. Yeah. Advantage is basically, the roots just spend 0.02% of time in water. Okay, next. Uh, crops require only 5% of fertilizer. We use fertilizer type uh, in quantities of grams per, per day. Okay. Um, 
very little manpower is required as again the drudgery of agriculture does not exist here there is a lot of hard work yes but the drudgery of agriculture is not there in this okay. um, it's cost effective in the sense we, if we had to add a cost to the resources that we use not to consider the infrastructure cost initially but i'll come back and touch certain things of the economics of problems because i'm sure that has many questions with people next slide please yeah here basically the characteristic is that water and nutrients are recycled i mean traditionally if i grew potato as a crop i would require about 20 liters of water per day here we do hardly with 60 ml so that's a quantity of water difference that this technique will have next slide please next slide this we have seen yeah so uh, basically when if you had to make a comparison of uh, various methods here you are able to control the shoot system and the root system the environments used there the kind of environment uh, uh, what should i say factors we apply there and hence we are really optimizing yield to the highest next slide please i maybe a present copy of the presentation can be shared because i understand some students are here and they can look at all these basically because it's sterile what we do mainly focus here is on seed potato production and it's my humble discovery that if we give good quality seeds to farmers you don't need any subsidy and other support later if you are given a poor quality seed heaven forbid no subsidy or nothing can help the farmer so this technique basically not just by us world over today is a gold standard for producing potato seeds because when you grow once in a year it takes almost 7 to 8 years to release a variety in our case with this technology with most people we are now doing it in about less than 2 years Coincidentally, some of you would have seen this in the uh, movie Mars. Next slide, please. So, some of the places where still it's at research stage, and I would like the students and faculty wherever to really draw their attention at this. So, one, if you wanted to study crop physiology, biotic and abiotic stresses, some plants are susceptible to excess moisture or shortage of moisture, or a particular living organism pathogen or uh, ecto or uh, endomicrobe. This is the technique only available to you where you need to touch the roots. Similarly, our understanding of crop nutrition goes down, goes very deep if you adopt this technology, because there is no other locked or undiscoverable or dependent nutrient that exists in any uh, soil. Similarly, if you want to take up microbiome soils, if you want to study proteomics or metabolomics, if you want to do this phytonutrients or active ingredients in plants which can be used as medicinal uh, properties. and want to understand what is influencing the uh, active ingredients formation this is the technology for you similarly there is a science called induced systemic resistance which is uh, very different from creating vaccines for human beings if i am able to induce a certain resistance in a plant it's not going to have a fungal infection that's the whole idea so today next slide please today already like i said we are using the aerophonics for seed production and medicinal plant cultivation these are the two major areas where we have commercial applications next slide yeah i get asked a lot of questions okay so the first of it is is it organic okay and i wish to just leave it an answer saying that look it's a relative choice because most people want to be purist at that and use and i will just i would not like to call aeroponics as organic okay we do use chemicals but they are only to the extent of nutrients we ensure such a sterile condition that there are no pests and hence no pesticides or other harmful chemicals used nutrients are not harmful you need to know the level at which to use it yeah similarly many people ask me is this food safe and let me assure you 100% is as safe as anything can be on earth probably it's a little more safe but let's not get into that let's accept it that this is safe because all the care that can be taken has been taken to grow the crop yeah so uh, another question is this natural um, <laughs> it is natural there's no genetic modifications involved here uh except that there is no soil everything else is a natural growth process we do not artificially uh, induce growth in it okay i said there's no genetic modification then uh, people ask me about is it commercially viable okay uh, today none other than itc and mahindra's practice this technology to uh, you know capitalize on the potato as a crop and this is a gold standard world over we must be having about 50 projects all over the world at the max i believe i don't know more than 20 but i'm willing to say there are some more projects which are not visible to us and i'm happy to tell you that we have one in karnataka next slide please yeah do we get higher yields okay. here's where i do not want youngsters to be misled or people to be led because 
a lot of Google literature does talk of high yields. Now, really, what is the scale you measure? I mentioned to you that we managed to harvest, let's take on a lower end of 25 to 40 tubers per plant, whereas outside I would have got it per crop. Okay, in a year, so I would be doing not in less than 100 uh, tubers per plant. Whereas if I did a commercial cultivation, I'd get 30 tubers per plant. So it is a high yield, but it's not the net yield that we do because we do not try to take large potatoes. We take smaller potatoes. Next, please. Yeah. So how much lesser nutrient does it use? Significantly lesser. Yeah. This video, I think, will run for a minute. Is there a video on that? So you can see some crops. Just one more click, the video. What is the opportunity that I see? You know, sometime back when I was in Vietnam, we discovered this. Um, we can grow a potato sugarcane as an intercrop. So the sugarcane farmer who uh, basically don't grow any crop in the field for the first 100 days, while they're doing the sowing of sugarcane, can also simultaneously sow potato. And at the end of 100 days, they do something called the ridge breaking to do, uh, to do earthing up for the uh, sugarcane crop. In the same crop, without doing any additional work, they can har harvest it potatoes. So the farmers end up getting two crops. This is a great advantage to Karnataka where we have huge area under sugarcane cultivation. A lot of water, what we needed is uh, good quality water, uh, seeds available to our farmers, which is what we are trying to do. Hopefully we'll provide it for the rest of the country too. Next slide, please. Yeah, I think that's the uh, brief presentation. If I have the time, we would like to take you live there. Um, do we have the time? Can I ask Vishwas to come online if it's possible? Maybe we can. Yeah, quickly, I think. If we have the time. Yeah. Vishwas, can you show the crop? Maybe we can show the chamber somewhere. So this is the crop you are seeing live today. It's going to be harvested. We kept it pending for your view. Thank you, Vishwas. I think yeah, we should move on. OK. Thank you. Uh, so we could take questions later or now as appropriate. Mm, I think we can take questions later. We we'll, Let's finish the. Both the presentations, and then we can have questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, we, we, uh, now I invite Mr. Pratik Tiwari. Yes, sir. I'll just share my presentation. Anybody confirm whether my screen is visible? Yeah, I think yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Namaskar, uh, my name is Pratik Tiwari. I'm the founder and CEO of the Living Greens. Uh, today we are going to talk about converting rooftops into organic farms, 
for sale fuels and commercial farming. Um, I can assure you one thing by the time this presentation is over, you will have one thought in your head that there's a lot that, that can be done on the rooftops. And, and we never thought about uh, rooftops as a useful space. It, it continues to be a redundant space in almost every household. Uh, let's first look at the problems that are being faced by almost every city, not just in India, but across the world. So we know that cities are becoming hotter. And because the cities are becoming hotter, they're becoming low pressure areas. And because they're becoming low pressure areas, they are continuously inviting airborne pollution. And that leads to very poor air quality. So much so that uh, doctors in, in cities like uh, Delhi have started saying that uh, due to the poor air quality, children below the age of 12 will suffer permanent tissue damage in their lungs uh, for the rest of their lives. So things are, are, have become so bad. And then there are power shortages simply because of the fact that our buildings are becoming hotter and we require more energy to cool them. So uh, people can't survive without air conditioners. So more and more power is being used. So obviously there are going to be power shortages. Pesticides in vegetables is, is something that we have heard a lot about, but the problem is not just pesticide in vegetables. Uh, it's also about heavy metals. So uh, we wrongly assume that uh, the only culprit uh, that is hiding in our vegetables uh, is the toxic pesticide. Uh, now we need to understand that uh, vegetables can be categorized into two simple categories. Those vegetables which are coming from long distance areas where they are strategically grown in large areas. So, for example, there could be a tomato growing area or a potato growing area or an onion growing area. So, the tomato, potato, onion that you are receiving is actually coming from very long distances where uh, hundreds of acres of potato, hundreds of acres of tomato are being grown. And because intensive cultivation of the same crop is being done, so there uh, the, crop, the uh, disease and pest have become endemic and hence more and more toxic pesticides are being used. So, that as far as uh, toxic pesticide is concerned, that's the correct understanding. But what we have failed to understand is that the other category of vegetable, uh, particularly the leafy vegetables. Now, those leafy vegetables are not coming from those strategic areas. Those leafy vegetables are coming from very, very small uh, plots uh, uh, on the periphery of the city uh, where they are being grown. Now, unfortunately, on the periphery of the city, groundwater is not available because thanks to colonization, uh, the groundwater is now uh, has has go way down below. And in fact, uh, it has started becoming saline. So these very urban growers are forced to use the free flowing water, which could be uh, the river water or the sewage water. Now, even the rivers have also become sewages. Uh, they've become large sewers because they have been contaminated with industrial pollution. And those industrial effluents contain heavy metals. The problem with heavy metals is that they get absorbed directly in the in the tissue of the of the vegetable. So that means that when you're growing, when you're eating vegetables which have been grown using effluent water, you are directly ingesting heavy metals. And heavy metals do not get digested in the gut of uh, in your gut, and they keep on getting accumulated, and then they can rise, give rise to any any sort of uh, carcinomas, what we also call cancer. So that's a big problem. And then uh, food miles uh, ha have been increasing. Uh, food miles basically means the distance that your food is traveling before it reaches your plate. So the food miles are, are increasing uh, and hence more fuel is being burned to, uh, more fuel is being burned per kg of vegetable for moving it from long distances to your plate. And then uh, a hidden problem, which is actually boiling under the surface, are the jobless rural youth in the cities. Uh, rural youth are migrating into the cities, uh, and they're looking for uh, petty jobs, all, all sorts of jobs, but they're not finding it. A and then ultimately, they get into petty politics, student politics, or, or they start doing very small jobs like guard or car cleaner, and those kind of things. So these are problems which are not endemic to any specific city in India. I mean, if almost every city in the world is facing this uh, these problems. Now, how is it connected to rooftop farming? See, rooftop farming is now emerging as a panacea uh, for all these problems. Uh, on one hand, uh, so uh, I did not talk about kitchen waste uh, 
problem but that that is also a huge problem that that's a major headache for every city administration uh, how do how do they what do they do with the kitchen waste so composted kitchen waste can be used as a biofertilizer for, for growing uh, rooftop organic vegetables it's actually a beautiful uh, loop it's it's a closed cycle so you are you are growing organic vegetables using the composted kitchen waste you're consuming those organic vegetables and then generating kitchen waste which again can be composted and again be used for growing those organic vegetables that's a very beautiful balance cycle that that can uh, happen if if we uh, if we start popularizing rooftop organic farming then the other thing is that uh, energy can be saved because uh, the exposed rooftops will now get a natural green cover they will not be exposed directly to the sun and thus the buildings shall be cooler so there there will be a tangible and a drastic reduction in the uh, consumption of energy for cooling the building and then of course food miles are going to get reduced because you are you are creating the shortest possible uh, supply chain in the world you are growing where you are consuming nothing could be shorter than that so you are actually bringing down the food miles to almost zero today the food miles for for a city like bangalore would be not not less than about 400 kilometers you are actually bringing it down to zero and then of course you are converting your rooftop which is a redundant space to to grow uh, fresh organic vegetables uh, uh, rooftop organic farming uh, can create jobs for the rural youth and i'm going to talk more about it in my subsequent slides and sequestration of carbon dioxide uh, definitely happens uh, in abundance it happens in abundance because vegetable plants during the process of photosynthesis are absorbing a lot of carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen and water vapor so uh, uh, governments uh, city governments state governments and all the way up to the prime minister's office there, there is a rising realization that by popularizing rooftop organic farming uh, there are there are multiple problems that can be simultaneously addressed so just to give it a mathematical uh, uh, foundation uh, i just did this small uh, calculation that what kind of an, what kind of annual figures we can see if we are doing rooftop organic farming in 100000 square feet so this 100000 square feet is not one rooftop it is basically the aggregated area so we we could consider 100 large building each building having 1000 square feet uh, of rooftop space now when you are doing uh, rooftop organic farming of seasonal vegetables on 100000 square feet what kind of numbers or what what is the impact of that 100000 square feet of rooftop organic farm and that's what i've tried to uh, put it in tangible numbers so you can produce 100 metric tons and and these are annual numbers so you can produce uh, 100 metric tons of fresh organic vegetables which can feed up to 550 families uh, the fuel cost which is saved that can be up to 20 lakhs now please remember that all these figures are connected to the assumption that the uh, rooftop organic farming is being done in 100000 square feet uh, 900 metric ton of kitchen waste can be composted and reused uh, 100000 square feet of rooftop space uh, can receive natural green cover and uh, up to 300 uh, rural youth who come to the uh, cities so 300 youth can be trained uh, for uh, if you're doing rooftop organic farming in an aggregated rooftop area of 100,000 square feet. I've also mentioned my assumption. So the rooftop area is 100,000 square feet. The number of large buildings, I'm, I'm talking about 100 large buildings, each with 100, uh, each with 1,000 square feet. The daily vegetable consumption per family, I have assumed it to be about half a kg. Uh, the quantity of raw kitchen waste required to create one kg of kitchen waste compost is three kg. And the quantity of kitchen waste compost uh, used per square feet for growing organic vegetables is about three kgs and the number of trained rural youth required per building is is three you require three youths to maintain uh, a rooftop farm and we are talking about 100 buildings so the reason why i put these numbers here is that uh, rooftop organic farming is not a glamorous fancy figure it actually tangibly impacts and solves uh, a lot of problems simultaneously now there are various types so we categorize rooftop organic farming uh, in these various categories so there is home farming that means uh, individual citizens who have got space on the rooftop they can grow their organic vegetables 
we are now uh, we are talk, we are now talking about an a new era of commercial rooftop farming that means young entrepreneurs who are attracted to organic farming but would not like to or may not have the resources to do uh, organic farming on land that is buying land or taking land or rent and then uh, doing organic farming there those young entrepreneurs can actually occupy the empty rooftops of large buildings like schools hospitals colleges universities offices i mean think about it all those large buildings have got empty rooftops so these entrepreneurs can commercially produce uh, uh, organic vegetables from these large rooftops and the beautiful thing about this commercial rooftop farming concept is that it's going to be a, a carbon neutral concept that means that not only are you producing organic vegetables in the heart of the city you are probably just using a bicycle to deliver those freshly harvested organic vegetables to um, a premium customer or the premium customer could be an individual housewife or it could be the chef of a hotel but you are you are not using any fuel at all and uh, the the winning proposition of commercial rooftop farming is that you can tell your your customer that the vegetable that you picked up today morning from the vegetable shop whether it's reliance fresh or or any other whether it's organized or unorganized retail shop the vegetable that you picked up today morning is at least 14 to 18 hours old but the vegetable that you are receiving from the rooftop is just 14 to 18 minutes old because you are growing those vegetables in the heart of the city then the other category is school farming we love doing uh, doing work with the schools because uh, it it not only um, gives an opportunity for the school to utilize its large rooftop it really connects children to organic farming till till today schools uh, were forced to uh, to take children on uh, on farm picnics if they genuinely wanted the children to connect with farming but uh, rooftop organic farming enables a school to educate their children and connect them to to organic farming right there on top of their rooftop so school farming is is also something that we are very um, excited about and then community organic farming uh, is also possible that means people who are living in apartments they they don't need to lose hope that they don't have their own rooftop space well just change your mindset think about it you have such a large common rooftop why can't all families come together and create a community organic farm on that large common rooftop so these are the categories uh, of uh, rooftop organic farming that we have come across now it's not that uh, people have not tried to grow uh, vegetables uh, in their houses but over these eight and a half years so living beans was founded in 2013 and it's been more than eight and a half years during these eight and a half years i have realized that almost every urban grower is facing the same set of problems the same same common set of problems so either they are using containers which has got a leaking bottom so a lot of people assume that they when they put a tray under the uh, under the pot then it serves the purpose well actually the tray will lead to water logging so the tray is really not a good idea but if you remove the tray then all the water is anyway going to touch the surface of the rooftop and it may cause seepage now people have started using grow bags but the problem with grow bags is that there is no subsurface drainage which means that if there is a uh, rainfall or over irrigation there is going to be water logging inside uh, the grow bag then a lot of people are making this huge mistake of using soil on the rooftop so please remember soil uh, please remember that rooftop is not technically speaking in the language of civil engineering rooftop is not a load bearing structure so you have to be extremely careful about the kind of weight that you're putting on the rooftop now the problem with soil is that when you irrigate it it becomes extremely heavy and if you are filling a pot and uh, putting that pot on the rooftop and irrigating that pot then you are concentrating a lot of heavy weight in very very limited area so uh, that is also something that that's a huge mistake that a lot of people are doing and then the whole process of planting is very very space inefficient uh, i i see people planting you know innumerable vegetables in an extremely restricted space 
uh, it's impossible. That that's not the right way of growing. You are actually causing the plants to compete against each other for nutrition. So so the method of planting is extremely space inefficient. And then of course, uh, uh, most of the urban growers are dependent on their gardeners who have absolutely no idea about how to organically control pests and diseases. And all the enthusiasm, it falls flat when uh, your, your nicely growing tomato plant gets affected by a pest or disease. So these are the common problems that, that we have seen urban growers facing. And uh, precisely to address these common problems, we have uh, created what we call a rooftop farming pack. Now the rooftop farming pack consists of the following uh, components. The first thing is called a portable farming system. Now, what you see here in the picture can be shipped in, in, in a CKD form. That means it can be shipped in pieces, it can be received in pieces, and it can easily be self-installed by the receiver. Uh, in fact, uh, during the lockdown, during the pandemic, in fact, during both the lockdowns, we were actually quite amazed that even senior citizens of, of 65 or 68 years of age, they were able to self-install this portable farming system. Uh, and the reason for that is that all the joints are color coded and then we have also created a self installation video so once you refer to the self installation video it's 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 just it's as simple as putting the lego cubes together then what you see here filled inside this uh, this green container is not soil it's it's a unique organic soilless medium and uh, this soilless medium is one third the weight of soil it has taken us 8 years of hard research but the beauty of this uh, organic medium is that it is crop agnostic. That means you can grow medicinal plants in it, you can grow flowering plants in it, you can grow fruit plants in it, and you can of course grow uh, vegetable plants in it. A very important thing uh, when you're doing rooftop farming is that you need to make sure that the container that you're using, it should not have any heat sealed joints. So generally, uh, the containers that are available uh, on e-commerce marketplaces like Amazon, uh, those containers have been created by uh, uh, by sticking two uh, surfaces together using a hot air gun. So basically melting the two surfaces and sticking them together. So they are called heat seal joints. So the problem with the heat seal joints is that when that container is sitting on the rooftop and it is uh, suffering from the extremities of temperature from very, very hot to very cold, those heat seal joints become weak. And as they become weak, they uh, water is able to find its way out of those uh, joints, and then they subsequently lead to seepages under your roof. So having a leak-proof container is extremely important, and then it has its own drip irrigation system. Uh, sim it's not just about saving water, but we have realized that a lot of people who want to grow vegetables either on the rooftop or in their balconies, they make this huge mistake of using pipe for offering water. Now, uh, that's a very wrong thing to do. Uh, you will actually end up uh, killing your plant. Drip irrigation system is great because um, just drop by drop is falling in the root zone. And then the other important thing is that you can inject uh, organic root applications through the drip irrigation system and they will travel to the root zone of each and every plant. And then I talked about drainage system. So this has got its own subsurface drainage system. I would like to remind you that this product has evolved over eight years, eight and a half years. This product is currently being used in over 1500 houses spread across 25 cities, which also means that this product has been used in various agroclimatic conditions from Salem in the south to Kolkata in the east to Bikaner in the west and all the way up to Pathan Kot or Kot Dwar in the north. And then, uh, as you can see, it has a trellising frame with green net. Now, the trellising frame actually becomes very useful when you're growing creepers. Now, besides the portable farming system, we also offer, or let's say along with the portable farming system, we also offer an organic input kit. Now, the purpose of the organic input kit is to control uh, pests and diseases in an organic manner, but to also offer nutrient recharges. So there are three components. So we have the organic sprays and root application. So there are seven organic sprays. So as you can see in this picture, uh, the bottles have been named as per the day of the week. But the fact of the matter is that the Monday bottle does not contain 
a product called Monday or a Tuesday bottle does not contain a product called Tuesday. We have just named these bottles just to make sure that you are using, uh, you are spraying these uh, these organic inputs on a regular basis. But just to give you a sneak peek, a Monday bottle contains a very, very interesting thing. It's called Bavaria Basiana. And uh, people from agriculture would uh, appreciate Bavaria Basiana. It's, it's, a, it's a liquid fungus. It's a live fungus. And when it gets sprayed on the skin of the insect, it uh, it spreads a fungal infection all around the, the body of the insect and ultimately kills the insect in 72 hours. And it's an extremely effective way for controlling all kinds of uh, pests uh, in, in, in organic farming domain. So similarly, we have the Tuesday spray, which contains uh, neem oil. Then in Wednesday, we have the shepherd So basically, these sprays are a combination of modern biocontrol agents and Vedic formulations. So moving on, the second category of items we have are traps and lures. So uh, we have pheromone trap, which is basically for uh, fruit flies and yellow sticky trap for flying uh, insects. And then for mid-season and end-season application of nutrients, uh, we also offer two biofertilizers. Now, uh, mid-season application is important because the vegetative growth is peaking at that time. And end-season application basically means that when you're removing the crop, all the uh, vegetables have been harvested, and when you're removing the plants of that crop, uh, and you want to make your, uh, your, um, your organic medium rejuvenated for the next crop, that is where the end season application of biofertilizer is done. So everything travels as a single kit, as a single compact kit to the customer. Then we offer online support systems. So there are two kinds of support. So one is reactive support in which we create a WhatsApp group uh, and we encourage our clients to send their problem pictures every day. And then on the basis of the problem pictures, our experts they offer solution, but again, very important. Our solutions are restricted to the components of the organic input kit or to any specific interculture practice. So for people new to agriculture, interculture practice just basically means those physical activities that you need to do while growing the vegetables. So it could, it could mean hoeing, it could mean spraying, it could mean trellising, it could mean 3G cutting, it could mean 4G cutting, those kind of things. And then we offer proactive support in which we have digitized our eight and a half years of knowledge and converted it into videos of interculture practices. Now, these videos do not contain any language. They, they don't contain any sound. The videos are completely focused on hand movement. So what that basically means is that if, if my organic expert has told you that, sir, please do trellising of your bottle guard creeper, uh, we will send across the video on tre uh, trellising now, even if you don't have the time, you just have to share that video with your gardener or your servant and tell him just follow this video. Now, he can also, even if he is illiterate, he can still follow the video because it's completely visual. There are, there are no subtitles, there is no narration. So it's easier for an illiterate person also to follow those videos. Then we have schematic diagrams which help our clients to do sowing. We need to make sure that plant to plant and row to row distance is maintained. Then we have vegetable calendars that that enable our clients to understand what can be grown next. And then we have created hundreds of info nuggets in the form of small PDFs. Like for example, we have a PDF called components of the organic input kit and their functions. So those tiny little info nuggets in the form of PDFs are also shared through the online support system. And then in very specific cities in Rajasthan, in NCR and in Bihar, we are also offering on-site maintenance support in which we do hardware check, we do plant health check, we do organic sprays, root application, uh, on-site, we also do on-site nursery preparation. And this is precisely the reason why we are now looking for city business partners because we uh, the on-site maintenance support team would be created by the city business partners. Uh, what can be grown on the rooftop? Uh, although it's a heavily populated slide, I would just uh, I just wanted to mention the the vegetables that can be grown that that we grow very well. So like bottle gourd, rich gourd, bitter gourd, musk melon, watermelon, pumpkin, okra, uh, beans, brinjal, chili, and even sweet corn. Uh, and these numbers are basically uh, telling the customer that um, how many plants will be grown, what is the harvest stage. Uh, what is going to be the duration of the harvest, what is the frequency of harvest, and what is the quantity per harvest. So this is basically how we create the vegetable plan for each and every client. 
Similarly, in the winter season, we have cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, purple cabbage, tomato, cherry tomato, uh, three kinds of lettuce, uh, different leafy vegetables like spinach, fenugreek, cilantro, uh, radish, table radish, beetroot, carrot, uh, and onion and potato. Uh, so definitely our, our yield of potato is far, far, far less than what you have seen in that marvelous uh, uh, aeroponics presentation that was made by Sunkar sir. Uh, but yes, you can definitely grow potatoes in your house using uh, uh, in, in the portable farming system. Now, what, what I'm going to now present to you is something which is so exciting that it keeps me awake every night. Uh, we call it the City Fresh model. And the City Fresh model is something unique that the world is going to see. This is going to be the first online platform which is going to connect urban growers, urban uh, rooftop growers with urban consumers. So there are three categories of, of uh, urban rooftop growers. So there could be home growers, there could be commercial uh, rooftop farmers, and then there could be schools which are utilizing their large rooftops for commercially growing the vegetables. Uh, on the other hand, uh, hotel chefs, housewives, and even vegetable sellers, they would also be coming onto this platform. Now, this online platform is going to connect uh, the urban growers with the urban consumers. Now, more importantly, what kind of information uh, would the urban grower be inputting into this platform? So he'll say, uh, where am I located? Where am I, what am I growing? What is the growth stage of my crop? How many days to harvest for each crop? What is my unit pack size? What is the sale price of each unit pack? Now, those are, those are the info, info points that will be inputted by the urban organic grower. Now, what will the urban organic consumer search for? He can find out, uh, he can input where he is located, and then he can find out who is the closest urban farmer, uh, closest to his house. Then which of his vegetables are ready for harvest? What quantity of each vegetable do I want to buy? Do I want the vegetables home delivered? So this platform, is going to bring together all of that information. And it's not just about connecting urban growers with urban consumers. It's also about creating an online community of, of hobby gardeners. Even hobby gardeners can participate on this platform and they can do a lot of knowledge sharing with each other. What to grow, what kind of seeds to use, does anybody have surplus seeds? Uh, would he like to share his surplus seeds with somebody? Does anybody have surplus leafy vegetable? Would he like to barter uh, his leafy vegetables uh, and take and pick up seeds from that person and give the organic leafy vegetables to that person? There's so many amazing things that can happen on this uh, online platform. Another very, very important thing is that uh, we are focusing a lot on educating and training the urban unemployed youth in urban organic farming. Now, those, those trained youth can also access the City Fresh online platform to find out uh, business opportunity or employment opportunity or even short-term employment opportunity in individual houses who are doing rooftop organic farming or in commercial roof farms or even in, in farmhouses who are interested in growing organic vegetables. So it's not just about business. It's also about uh, enabling young people who have migrated from, from the rural areas into the cities, training them, and then uh, enabling them to use this platform to find out short-term and long-term employment opportunities in any of these categories. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we, we have started a very unique uh, project called Mahila Mali, which is for the skill development and employment of women. This is being done in the state of Bihar. So, uh, women living in slums, I, I myself interviewed 14 such women and we, we have created a team of two, uh, two uh, selected women. Now, these two women are called Mahila Mali and currently they are undergoing their training on rooftop organic farming and ultimately they would be offering on-site maintenance services to people who are growing vegetables on the rooftop either for self-use or for commercial cultivation. Uh, and the City Fresh model can also be used as an e-commerce platform for uh, for for selling uh, products and services. I won't go too much into it. Now, there's another aspect that I want to uh, bring into this uh, into this presentation. A lot of state governments, 
are are uh, waking up to the usefulness of rooftop organic farming so these are uh, the state governments but something very unique and tangible has happened in two states so for example in the government of bihar has offered uh, for the past two years it is offering 50% subsidy uh, specifically for rooftop farming and 1000 houses are going to be covered and the total project size is about 5 crores and we happen to be their partners all the way from conceptualization to ideation to process execution and today we are also the largest in panel vendors uh, with the department of horticulture government of bihar another very exciting uh, development that has happened is the new town kolkata development authority has now made it mandatory for new buildings to have rooftop gardening and the existing building if they are doing rooftop farming then they will be getting a rebate a long term rebate in property tax so this is a, a, a very very a clear um, uh, decision that has been taken by the new town kolkata development authority uh, lastly very quickly i'll just waste a couple of seconds of your time just talking about my company my my dream uh, it's called living greens we are india's first rooftop organic farming company we were established in 2013 uh, with the support of angel investors from the silicon valley uh, we now have over 1500 customers in 25 cities more than 8 years of hands on experience and most importantly we have been able to digitize our knowledge in order to offer online support system not just to to people in in india we are now actively uh, talking to ngos in south america in bangladesh and in nepal Uh, and offering them online uh, support for rooftop organic farming using that digitized knowledge uh, i'll leave that part i just wanted to uh, share this we are creating three kind of channel partners city business partners uh, gardening shops are becoming a dealers and we are also offering a program for agriculture graduates to become agripreneurs a little about the rewards and recognitions we are very proud about this one particular date 18th of march 2018 when we got an opportunity to uh, present our concept to prime minister modi and his immediate reaction after listening to the entire presentation was uh, let's uh, let's integrate this into our smart city mission so thank you very much for being patient listeners and once again i'm sharing my dream with all of you our dream is to create a million organic homes thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you so much and i think we are left with little, very little time so let's start with the questions first anybody has question regarding shunkat sir's presentation first i think they have already the question answer if i can go there are lot many questions if you can go to question answer yes sir i noticed there is a question called what are the nutrition values of tuber crops uh, we have done some testing um the profiles match you know we particularly like i told uh, there's a lot of research happening on uh, medicinal plants um, but this is not to assume that in the first and second crop you get that very little micronutrient deficiencies also alter the profiles there and that's a little deep ip we hold where we can recreate to the nearest possible of any nutrition you would want okay uh, excuse me yeah. can, can i can i complete the question sure um my question was on vertical farming i see nowadays in india lot of uh, tuber like uh, turmeric and others growing in vertical farming now my question was what uh, i see sometimes that there is good uh, production but my question was in vertical farming in tuber uh, crops what is the is is the nutrition value secured in this or just we are growing something with lot of water inside thank you <laughs> yeah particularly because we are in the seed business activity we need to check uh, i wouldn't call it nutritional quality because we did not use it for feed purpose but as a number of tests we do to understand the vigor and genetic trueness of uh, the uh, this potato plants or plant, planting material we produce and uh, this is today a world gold standard indian research institutes and international research institutes have agreed on this now so far as other plants are concerned we do know that uh, active ingredients and nutri- phytonutrient profiles change so it would not be correct for me to cast aspersions on others 
but it's a subject of research and development please it wouldn't be as bad as you would uh, fear hello yeah please go ahead uh i'm impressed by pratik uh, tiwari ji he has done a very good job uh but uh, i have some doubts about uh, that uh, aeroponic uh, he said he was using uh, some chemical inputs and when you using with along with the water and you producing with water then your testing comes to ppb not ppm it may might go even higher than that so what uh, what are the chemical residues uh, uh, you see they getting uh, in uh, aeroponics so primary uh, small clarification just to repeat we use nutrients you know like nitrogen phosphorus potash they are in the chemical form which include zinc exactly. boron molybdenum etc okay but you can't talk of something called the residue because they go on to form the plant body itself both in the plant and in the tuber you know like uh, things like copper or sodium uh, are required in very trace quantities but there is no see, point there is the see no no there is a point there is a point here you see there are different bases are you getting it from the bio base or are you getting from the chemical base there is a lot of difference yes I'd like to take this offline, please, if you permit. Uh, primarily yeah. being, uh, residues are in oh, the soil. Yeah. In this case, because water is recycled, there is no loss of water or nutrients. We do not drain out any nutrients to nature. We I add no, have water. loss of water. I have question: When you feed the chemical and it goes into into the plant in in its DNA form. and or, or you might say in a nano form what comes out you see i am an organic farmer since 92 and we have reached a level of non allergen if somebody has allergy to wheat or anything we produce and uh, uh, one consumes from uh, you know, the, the produce from our farm they don't get the allergy mm -hmm. so that's where the problem lies see when you feeding chemicals it goes into the nano form and it goes into the dna of it Sir, I will. I will. I will just clarify this. Uh, sir, it is very simple. The here for mainly the potatoes, these are produced only for the seed purpose. So what Sunkat sir has told, here we are use not using organic uh, fertilizers. They are using synthetic fertilizers, but it is mainly used for the seed. But it is not for the yeah. organic growers. I have a question. That's where I have a question. Firstly, the seed industry in India is a failure, and it's been, you know, told uh, uh, by the chair itself. Uh, I attended some meetings there, and uh, the main disease is when you give it to the farmers. The disease is uh, my assessment is forty percent of the diseases are coming from the seed. We cannot afford to produce the seed uh, from. Uh, I mean, uh, based on the chemicals. I'm sorry. Point taken, please. I think there is always going to be a fear of new technology. Um, we are not against. Like I like I told in my talk, my deepest respect to soil and organic farming came because I experimented with this. I am not recommending this for human consumption, but the strategic problem of seed shortage we are solving with this technology. I would no, be happy to no, take a one-on-one -on -one with you. There is there is a shortage of management and the will and and the universities those who are not doing any work in organic. I have lot of these people as my friends, my dear. I'm the. I with all farmer. respect, I take it and uh, so far as the merits of organic farming, we shall continue to recommend that and uh, let people practice and encourage. Uh, for the moment, let's take it that uh, this is a new technology. Okay. Now, if I want to change this chemical input instead uh, into organic inputs, because I give, tell you a very, very uh, you know unique thing, there is a Shabd in Gurbani, Guru Granth Sahib, "Pella pani jio hai jit haraya sab koi." So I have nothing against your uh, you know this technique, but I am against what you are feeding. You well, are I what you eat. It is for the plants. I think your point is valid, and uh, as uh, Mr. Sunkar said, to have one-to-one -one interaction. I think for the paucity of time, I will request you that if you can go to the next uh, question, please. Thank you.
think the other questions are for Prati. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Bindu ma'am has asked, have any infrastructure for rooftop farming? Uh, I think what you're asking is that you need to create any infrastructure for rooftop farming. No, you don't need to do that. Uh, just You just need to install the portable farming system, use the organic input kit, and follow the advice on the online support system. Uh, no, no other architectural change is required on your uh, The next question is by Shri Rohan Raji. Uh, he has said, how do we maintain irrigation schedule of drip system in these rooftop systems? Uh, Rohan Ji, uh, uh, we always advise our clients to first see the, the moisture in the medium. And, and that moisture in the medium should be seen at a depth of up to three inches. Only if the only if the medium is dry from top to three inches, only then you need to give your uh, you, you need to give irrigation through the drip irrigation system. Uh, having said that, there are times when there are senior citizens who are not able to go to the rooftop on a daily basis. So we use a digital timer to automate the irrigation system. Uh, but we would always encourage people to go to the rooftop and interact with the plants because please remember the plants are living beings and they love to uh, to have your presence close to them. Uh, then uh, Rohit Jay said, how and what how and what happens to the leachate coming from the rooftops? Okay, I talked about the subsurface drainage system. The subsurface drainage system is not leaving the water outside the container. The subsurface drainage system is carrying the water from the container all the way to the point where there is a drainage on your rooftop, which means that uh, no extra water, no brown color water is actually spilling all around the container. No. All of that water is getting channelized into the subsurface drainage system, which then is carrying the water all the way to the drain point of your rooftop. Uh, and uh, he is asked how many crops have been standardized in these rooftops with package of practices. Uh, I, I can't, okay, I think there are two questions, so let me answer this. Uh, well, as far as crops, uh, standardization of the package of practices are concerned, uh, the crops that I talked about during my presentation, uh, the package of practices have been uh, standardized and established using organic package of practices. Uh, and, and by the way, the package of practices have been created on the basis of the contents of the organic input kit. Uh, and uh, there's another question which I am not able to see. Okay. Uh, also, are these assemblies having any uh, Bureau of Indian Standard, uh, EIS? I think that's what you assume. No, uh, we have not sought any certification from any such body. So they are not BIS uh, certified. Okay, Bindu ma'am has asked for the cost of the whole system. Uh, ma'am, I would request you to uh, connect with us offline. Uh, because my intention is really not to uh, discuss financials here. Bariji, you can get it certified. I can help you. Don't worry. Uh, great, sir. Uh, who was that guardian angel? Uh, I'll be happy to connect uh, with him. Neva, uh, Shivari, I'm Grewal here. I'm yes, sir, yes, sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> sir. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to connect with him, sir. Uh, you get connected with me and we can always help you. Sure, sir. Uh, so I am just, I am just uh, sharing my contact number uh, in the chat box for for uh, any of the eminent guests to connect with me. I am just sharing my contact number in the in the chat box, and this is also my uh, my WhatsApp number. So please feel free to connect with me. Uh, there are times I may not be able to take your call, but I am definitely very prompt in responding to uh, the WhatsApp messages. And uh, my lastly, I, I just want to tell all of you, um, I started this as a dream, as a mission. Uh, this is not a business for me. I was making more money in Walmart that I have ever made in, in, in these past eight and, a half, eight and a half years. But since it's a mission, I would want every positive energy to join this mission. I, I want to share this dream and share this mission with each one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We, we thank both the speakers and I request Nakshatri sir to just sum it up. Okay, I think um, 
I think since we are short of time now, I think I will uh, go ahead with the uh, Mr. Prathvi. Can I go ahead with the word of thanks? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Although yes, I don't yes, sir. Very much. Well, yeah, I think we are running short of time. If any yes. questions, anything is there because it is a wonderful session. I, it gives me an immense pleasure to deliver what of thanks to this successful webinar organized under the aegis of Agro and Food Processing Expert Committee of BCIC. My heart goes out to thank our respectful participants logged in from across India and abroad for accepting our invitation and encouraging the speakers by their enthusiasm. I would also like to thank our respectful speakers, Mr. Jagdish Sunkat, Director Kanakadara Agricultural Innovations, Mr. Pratik Tiwari, Founder and CEO of Living Greens for enlightening presentation and taking out their, their busy schedule to grace this event so successful. Our special thanks to Dr. Sanjay Tivedi, Director of RBCs International for a wonderful moderation of the event. I would also like to thank Mr. K.R. Shekhar, President BCIC for inspiring keynote address and Mr. Ankur Bomik, co-chair Agro Food Processing uh, Expert Committee for excellent setting up the context for the webinar and also to all the members of the Agri Expert Committee members for making this event a memorable. Thanks to Professor Sudarshan Gadiwada and staff uh, and students from Venkateshwara University and there I think it is Tirupati and uh, the Mr. Uh, Professor Sudarshan, he's in Seattle. I think he logged in. It was in live with this university. I think maybe a few hundreds of students that are watching there. And also thanks to Mr. Shankar Subramaniam, who is from Malaysia, who's a financial and investor sector. And thanks to him from uh, Malaysia, he logged in and he was also present. Thank you, sir. And thanks to, I think, all other other delegates were present. I think I saw yesterday there are more than 120 doctorates in agriculture. They have logged in more than 130 lady professionals and doctorates. They were logged in this uh, webinar. Thanks to Dr. Uh, uh, Chaudapa, if he's there, Vice Chancellor, he wants to say something. I would like to give it to him. Mr. Rajendra Thakkar, who is the Cravo Technology for uh, Equipment. If he's there, he can also say. And also Mr. Uh, Teja Nursery, I think uh, Mr. Ramesh is there. If he is there, he can raise his hand. Otherwise, I will say thanks to Mr. Prathvi and Secretariat and staff of BCIC. Special thanks to Ms. Rupa for making this webinar a memorable. Once again, thank you all. Thanks a lot. And now it is over to Mr. Prathvi for National Anthem, please. Uh, thank you, Nasima Nashitri, sir. So before we could uh, go into the National Anthem, we would like to give a virtual memento to the speakers for the wonderful presentation that they have shared us and brought us the insights how to go in for this soilless uh, cultivation <coughs> for using the aeroponics and also on the terrace gardening. This will virtual memento will ensure that it reaches to their office or to the residents. Uh, over to you, Prashutam, for the virtual memento handing. This will be followed by the National Anthem. <laughs> Now let's have the national anthem played. Uh
Again, thank you to all of you. Thank you, Namaskar.